Hi there everyone and welcome to today's devotional from the gift that keeps on giving devotional series. Uh, we just trust and believe that you're ready to hear from God today. So let's go over to our devotional. Day 30. Take my life and let it be. Daily reading. John 12 verses 1 to 11. Text. John 12 verse 3. Mary then took a pint of the very expensive perfume of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. If they wanted the best in the world, then they would have to pay for it. This wasn't any copycat rubbish, this was the real McCoy. Egypt was the only place to get the real good stuff from, and if you wanted to buy the best of the best, then you had to go to the city of Albastron. The craftsman known as the Nose could never have imagined how world-renowned his perfume would become. And never, not even for a nanosecond, could he have ever imagined that people would be talking about his fragrance more than 2,000 years after he'd fused all the oil factory compositions together to make that particular perfume. That lovely incident in John's Gospel 111, when a lady called Mary poured her alabaster box of expensive perfume over the feet of Jesus, is rich in narrative. Those present, especially Judas, saw it as an atrocious waste, but Jesus considered it as a personal, heartfelt act of worship and consecration. When Mary's spike nard, as it is sometimes known, was broken over Jesus, the beautiful fragrance not only filled the room they were in at Bethany, its sweet aroma ascended to the very courts of heaven, and it has lingered down through the centuries. We are absolutely certain this was a very expensive fragrance, as it was manufactured in Alabastron, where they specialised in vessels and perfumes. Both Matthew and Mark tell us that the perfume was very precious, whilst John says that it was one pound in weight and very costly. We are not told how Mary acquired it. She could have purchased it from a merchant. It may have been ill-gotten gains, or it may have been bequeathed by her parents. We are not told how long she'd had it. It may have been quite recently, or indeed a long-time treasure. Of course, it might have been designated as very precious for sentimental reasons. We don't know. What we do know was she valued Jesus so much, she chose to anoint his feet with it, which was a significant sacrifice. This fragrance was most probably the most valuable item she had ever owned. This lady's offering was no it'll do offering. She was willing to give all she had her very best. In all honesty, there were five choices open to Mary in her use of the perfume. Firstly, she could have used it entirely on herself, which is what many, many people do with the alabaster boxes of their hearts and lives. Secondly, she could have just kept it and done nothing with it. I'm always saddened at how many of God's people have great gifts, skills, talents and various things they could offer for the Lord, but they choose to do nothing with them. Thirdly, she could have poured it on some loved ones or loved ones other than Jesus. There are significant amounts of believers who have screw-if priorities and their families and other things always come before Jesus. Fourthly, she could have shared it between all the others, either including or excluding Jesus. Lastly, there was the choice which she actually made, namely, devote it exclusively to Jesus, her Lord. And as she unscrewed the top and poured the perfume over Jesus, she was also pouring out something far more costly. She was pouring out the supreme love and devotion of her heart onto Jesus. There were several motives behind Mary's response. One, she did it out of reverence. As she spent time with Jesus, she recognised exactly who he was and that he was worthy of worship. She recognised the incarnate Christ. Two, she did what she did out of gratitude. While others seemed blind, through Mary's tear-filled eyes, she recognised there was much to thank Jesus for. Three, her response was an act of faith. She realised this was the God-man she needed to put her trust in. And four, there was a genuine love in her heart for Jesus. And then consider the features. Firstly, lip service wasn't enough. She had to give. Secondly, the cheap and inexpensive wasn't enough. She knew she had to give the costly. Thirdly, a part was not enough. 
she knew she had to give all. Fourthly, the unbroken wasn't enough. It had to be outpoured and Mary must fall at his feet and linger there. So here's the question. How do you and I compare with all that? The same five choices are open to us today. After all, this is Jesus we're talking about. He's worthy of your worship. He's worthy of saying, Take my life and let it be. Consecrated Lord to thee, take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my love, my Lord I pour. At thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, Jesus, the gift that keeps on giving and giving. For meditation today, look at the four points raised in this reading today. Ask yourself four questions. How do I show my reverence to God? How do I show my gratitude to God? Do I respond in faith to God and his leading? And is there a genuine love in my heart for the Lord? Take time to reflect and amend your lifestyle accordingly. Wasn't that a great devotion? So listen, what we want you to do today is to uh, meditate on that throughout the day when you're at work or at the workbench or in the office or at home or making the food. Uh, or if you're driving, meditate on that devotion. And, and what the word meditate means is to chew the cud, go over it and over it and over it, get something from that passage that you can meditate on to think about and see what the Holy Spirit wants to say to you about that devotion today. Now, don't forget, we have Radio New Springs, and at midday, we always have a midday worship service, and you are very, very welcome to log into that, radionewsprings.com. Of course, Pastor Trevor will also be there on the radio sharing the Lord's Prayer. So we want you to say the Lord's Prayer at lunchtime as well. And then just before you go to bed, why don't you just thank God and ask him to really seal what he's been saying to you throughout, throughout the day. Well, it's been great to have your company. Whatever you do, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Stay blessed. Okay, before I sign off then, let me just say to you, I want to pray with you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today and I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And I pray that, Holy Spirit, you will cause us to be more like Jesus. And Lord, let us be a great witness for you. You have made us your ambassadors and we want to go out and be your servants today. Lord, bless us and minister to us and give us a good day and keep us safe, we pray, as we go about our business in the name of Jesus. You are the gift that keeps on giving. Thank you, Lord. Amen.